Hey guys, Kero Sibi here with another review. This time I'll be reviewing the GC13 Kamen Rider Ghost Mugen Damashi from Kamen Rider Ghost. This is the 13th and final entry in the main Ghost Change series. And is also the last figure in the line. So, this set includes two things, one figure and one park ghost. So, let's get started. So, of course, first we're going to look at the base body, which I'll refer to as Ghost Mugen Transient. So, similarly to the early entries in the series, they rever reverted back to using clear plastic for the figure's body, but in this case, it's colorless clear plastic instead of clear black. So, it's a lot more transparent. The head has pretty much the standard design with the silver uh, textured face. Though, because it's transparent, you can also see the ball joint in there, and has a slightly detailed, or slightly differently detailed back part to the head, which will kind of go along with uh, the Mugen Damashi scheme when it's fully transformed. Going down to the body, we can see that while for the arms and legs they use pretty solid clear plastic, the torso itself is very hollow, so you can much more clearly see what's behind it. That being said, it still has the same base design. You can see an orange uh, ghost symbol tampographed onto the chest. Then, you got an infinity symbol on the chest which transitions from yellow down to blue down here. Some black and orange details on the sides. Of course, the ghost driver. You can see that they did mold in a Mugen ghost icon. Though, for one reason or another, probably due to plastic limitations, they molded the belt straps in white. And moving to the arms, you can, of course, see that, like I said, they are more solid clear plastic, but you also notice that they used white plastic for the joints as uh, one thing that is actually something that's a little known fact or somewhat known fact within the toy community is that on toys, if they use clear plastic for the joints, they're more likely to break. So it was a smart choice to use these solid white joints. You see that for the arms and legs, they have more infinity symbols. For the forearms, you got a couple of them in light blue purple on the upper thighs, and then for the shins, a nice magenta color. And the whole thing has glitter injected into the mold to give up that sparkly effect that the suit has in the show. Besides that, there's not too much else besides the painted on cuffs, knee pads, and anklets. And of course the articulation is the same for the Ghost Change series. Ball joint head, Full rotation of the arms, bend in and out, single jointed elbows, bicep swivel, wrist swivel, two finger joints, waist swivel, legs go forward and back, in and out, single jointed knees, thigh swivel, and ball joint ankles. Next we'll look at the other part of the set, the Mugen Ghost. So, as you can see, this is a white long coat type park ghost. And I actually managed to be able to stand it up on its own without a display stand. Which is likely just because of its design. So as you can see, the main body is of course molded in white plastic. With some orange highlights going around the hood and down the sides. Of course, see the painted on silver eyes, though you'll notice that the texture to the face part is a bit different, and that's again part of the design for Mugen Damashi. Of course, this does have some major motifs of the infinity symbol, a couple of them on the chest, one on each shoulder. If you connect the coattails together in the front, you'll see that they form continuous infinity symbols as well as the empty space on the side, which is actually a really cool detail. Then on the back, have, once again, another Infinity Symbol running down it. 
and the same ones that were on the front of the shoulder pads, though unpainted. As well as a little split in the coat tail right down here. Now this one is kind of odd as it doesn't really have any kind of makeshift arms or makeshift arms rather. Instead it just has these two little tassels that hang off the side. Though they are a little bit longer in the show. But that's basically just a size like this to accommodate for the transformation. And it's a little bit awkward because it just seems a bit strange because for others that had similar situations like Musashi, uh, who had no shoulder pads, it had the long tassels to substitute arms. And for, say, Toon Kamen, who also didn't have any shoulder pads, it made it look like he had his arms crossed. That being said, this is still a pretty cool design for a Parker Ghost. So, next we'll put these two together, and of course the transmission is simple as always. To repair the Parker Ghost, first take these parts on the shoulders and flip them up so they fit into these grooves on the top. And lift up the face part, and move the shoulders up for a bit of clearance. Then, drape the Parker Ghost over the figure. And secure the head in place. Making sure to lock it in at the shoulders. And tuck the uh, front coat tails behind the belt. Then, you can pull back the hood. And there you have Kamen Rider Ghost, Mugen Damashi. So, with the uh, transformation complete, you, knew, you now see the new uh, head, which has a very interesting design. So, to start with the face, you can see that it has inverted colors of Ore Damashi, with the uh, main part, which forms the mouth here, being black and the eyes being orange. You also see this interesting armor-like shell that covers the top of the head and actually goes down in front of the eyes. It has this interesting kind of scaled design to it, which is why it has that similar design on the back of the helmet. This has this beautiful rainbow colored horn which has a nice, gra a nice gradient color, which goes from orange to yellow to green to blue, as well as a nice gunmetal piece in the middle. You can see that it also has, like the rest of the body, glitter injected to the mold, and of course, like with the recent ghost change figures, the hood can either be on or off the figure. Though in this case, this is one of the few where it actually looks a bit better with the hood off because they actually did something to make the head design look a little bit more unique. Whereas for the rest of them, without the hoods, the face, the head design is a little bit plain because the face is the only part that's really unique and stands out. As for the rest of the body, it has a very nice look, and the two go quite well together. It's a very fitting design for a final form, and it is in, in quite a bit of contrast to his base form, which was mostly black in color, but this is mostly white, giving it a much more pure look. At the same time, you also have these differently colored infinity marks, which added more color to it. And the articulation, of course, isn't hindered too much because the shoulder pads do move out of the way. And because the coattails are not pegged in on sides, that gives the legs a lot more room to move around. 
Now this figure doesn't come with any weapons for itself, but of course you can use the weapons from the other figures and releases in the line. Similar to what they kind of had you uh, do with Gaim Kiwami Arms. So, for example, you can take the Gun Gun Saber Nagina mode from the Beethoven and Benkei set. Equip that to have him perform the Orokobi Scream. We have the other mode from the set, Gun Gun Saber Hammer mode, if you want him to perform Love Bomber. And of course, you can use the other five weapons or the other five modes for the other five attacks. So you have some legit options for the weapons that you're not using with your figures. Now while in the series, Mugen Damashi can't do any uh, ghost changes as it is the final form, so that wouldn't really be fitting. This is of course the ghost chain series, so anything goes and you can of course use any of the other party ghosts with this figure. So for a couple of examples, I brought in the other two long coats the Goemon Ghost and the Roma Ghost. So, start with Goemon. Just repair it like that. Place it on the figure. get everything pegged in. And there you have Goemon Damashi on the Mugen body. That looks pretty cool. Setting that aside. Let's move on to Ryoma. And there you have Ryoma Damashi on the Mugen body. Again, not too bad. And of course, like I said, you can put whichever ghost pleases you onto this figure. And see which ones look good to you and which ones might not look as good. And there we go. So overall, Ghost Mugen Damashi is a great figure and a pretty satisfying ending to the Ghost Chain series. As always with a lot of these figures, the figure is quite well designed, the ghost is also quite unique, and they do go well together, especially with the slight molding changes made to the head to make the two fit together even better. And of course, since this is part of the Ghost Chain series, you can do things with this figure and the include ghost that you couldn't see in the show, which is one of the big appeal points to the Ghost Chain series. And as far as the Ghost Chain series goes as a whole, it was overall pretty good. It was cool how you could take all these different forms and swap between them and also display them when they're not in use. That being said, I can't help but make comparisons with Gaim's Arms Chain series because it had a very similar concept in taking the different fruits-based arms and swapping them between riders. And that was also something that wasn't utilized much in the show, so there was a lot of appeal to doing that. That being said, as far as the ghost changes go in comparison, 
they aren't nearly as complex in terms of the transformation, and unfortunately they do limit some of the articulation in ways that the arms generally didn't. That being said, the priorities were a little bit different. With Gaim's Arms Chain series and the Gaim series as a whole, the priority was having a lot of different riders and not giving them as many forms each, which is why a lot of riders didn't have any personal arms changes, but because it was the Arms Chain series, you could take any of those arms that they wouldn't be able to swap in the show and do it with the figures. And there was a similar thing with the Ghost Chain series, but the other thing about the Arms Chain series was that there were so many riders that they had to make some of them premium bonded releases, and you didn't really get too much of that with the Ghost Chain series, where the priority was more on having a few riders, but giving them more forms each. Which is why you got all of those different Ghost sets. And because of that, they were able to for the most part, release just about all of the writers and ghosts within the line. The only two exceptions that you guys would probably have noticed were the Noon Ghost and Himiko Ghost. Well, those two are being released as a premium Bandai set under the GCPB label, meaning it's, once again, another extension of the Gimmick Line series, and I do have that set pre-ordered. So, while this is the last review for the main retail Ghost Change figures. This is not technically my final Ghost Change review. That being said, the Ghost Change series has been pretty good, or was pretty good, but it could have been better in terms of how it was designed. But as far as this figure goes, I can definitely recommend it. So, next time, I'll be reviewing or rather, I won't be reviewing anything, and instead, I'm going to be making a return to Toku Toy Theory and starting to look at the Gaim Toy series. So, if you enjoyed this video, please like, comment, and or subscribe, and you can check me out on Facebook at facebook.com slash krx50. And for now, this is krx50, writing off.